So if you're new here, I'm just going to recap my little keyboard journey that's taken place over the last year. So if you want to skip straight to the details of the Gergoplex, feel free to use the chapter system of this video. But I'm just going to look back a little bit over my keyboard journey because I think it will provide some interesting context as to how I'm kind of evaluating the Gergoplex and what I'm looking for uh, when I'm talking about it. So I started out wanting to find a mechanical keyboard that I could use at full productivity kind of you know with the ultimate layout but also portable enough that I could take with me to use that same productivity power while I'm working on the go with the iPad and that initially led me to the plank which is you know fantastic keyboard um, and still extremely good at, at balancing that combination of desktop power with portability so when I first discovered about ortholinear keyboards that removed this uh, row stagger, I was pretty set on that and I definitely was keen to learn those kinds of keyboards and stick with them. I have no requirement to share keyboards with other people, so I could definitely embrace this and know that the keyboard that I selected would be the only one that I would use. But of course, it's not a split keyboard, so you are in that position where your hands are together in front of you. So then ZSA sent me the Moonlander, which kind of showed me what a split keyboard would feel like. Now, I think this has obviously got way too many keys for that kind of uh, portable element. It turns it into a too big a keyboard to be really portable in the way that I was hoping. Um, but of course I had the plank already, so I could use the same layout on both, keep this on the desktop and use the plank for on the go. So what happened as I was experimenting and living with the plank and the Moonlander was I kind of evolved my layout down to a 36 key layout because I felt that I wanted to, to really minimize any unnecessary finger movement. So the Moonlander and the Plank were fantastic sort of introductions to this whole idea. And of course, the flexibility with the software made it very easy and approachable to experiment with layouts. And that's how I ended up with the 36 key layout. So I'm a little bit of a purist and seeing all the empty key switches uh, places on the Moonlander after I'd taken them all out to work with my 36 key layout. Yeah, I was kind of thinking it might be nice to go with a board that's just got 36 keys because that's all I'm using. So of course that led me to the Korn, which is uh, in this form a pure 36 key keyboard. Um, this one was built for me by Andrew from 3dkeeve.com. Very happy to recommend uh, the service he provides. Uh, absolutely fantastic, including all the 3D printed case with the translucent edges for the backlight to shine through. And uh, yeah, just a, a really nice keyboard. I actually changed the switches to the kale pink silence on this one as well. Uh, that with the MX style switches, all the Moonlander and the Plank and this one, I've got kale pink silence on. Uh, I think they're a really lovely switch. They're sort of really smooth. And the nice thing is they silence the kind of rattle at the top of the keys. You know, that's a lot quieter than the, the, all of the other switches I've tried, which really kind of clatter away just at the, at the top of the position there. These really dampen that down without adding any extra weight. They're still very light, they're 45 grams uh, actuation force. So lovely switches to use on an MX style keyboard. And so that's a really nice typing experience. But even so, there are still a few little concerns I had with it. The fact that you've only got a single size thumb key here kind of meant that I was slipping off that one, for some reason, my hand position meant that my thumb isn't quite centered on that key. So things like that kind of kept me looking for other options. And of course, with this corn, we're still not really achieving the kind of ultra portable uh, requirement that I had in mind. It's, you know, it's quite chunky still, and it's not really something you can just slip in line with an iPad case and, and expect to not notice it bulging out. You know, what I've got in my mind is those cool kind of Bluetooth keyboards that you can get if you're happy with a QWERTY and a stagger. There are loads of these on the market, ultra small, sometimes foldable, uh, very, very thin uh, Bluetooth keyboards. So that's the kind of benchmark in terms of portability. I'd love to try and achieve that kind of portability with the power of a customizable keyboard. So all of that led me to the Gergoplex, which is a really interesting keyboard. There's no case. It's just literally the PCB with the keys on the top. And it uses the Kale Chock switches, which are low profile, very, very light actuation force. And these are soldered directly into the keyboard. Now I've been a massive proponent of hot swappable switches up to this point. Uh, but with this one, you can actually still change the springs uh, without actually desoldering the switches. So I can still experiment with different uh, sort of actuation forces by changing the springs so in this case for me there is no real need for the hot swapping switches I'm quite happy with these switches but it's great to know that I can change the springs to experiment with the force I know I'm kind of set on linear switches now I'm, I'm not interested in experimenting with different kinds of tactile or clicky uh, switches 
So the Gergoplex can either be ordered with 12 gram springs or 20 gram springs. So I went with the 20 but ordered a set of 12 gram springs that I could switch to later. And I went straight to those as soon as I got it. I knew I was happy to just really push the, the lightweight switch thing. Um, actually, strangely, they weren't 12 grams in the bag. They were 15, so I don't know quite where the 12 ones went. And maybe they were out of stock or something like that. So I swapped the 20s for the 15s just to know that I was on the, the lightest one that I had available. Um, and it, it is an amazing experience to type on. Obviously, with being so light, the risk is you kind of find yourself accidentally hitting the keys all the time. Uh, but I don't find that at all for some reason. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm, I just I feel very happy with the lightweight switches. So the interesting thing about the the chock switches is they're actually closer together than normal MX style switches. So the circuit board needs to be kind of designed with this layout in mind. And in this case, obviously, it's completely flush to this ultra compact key arrangement. They're almost touching, you know, they're, they're really close together. And when you compare them with an MX switch, you can see they just pulled in quite a bit, but throughout the total of the five keys, there's a distance of about half a key uh, shorter overall length. Uh, and the same kind of effect goes between the rows as well. They're brought much closer together. So the distance you have to stretch your fingers to go up and down a row is much less on this. Even considering the sculpted profile on an MX style switch, which does bring that lower row slightly closer, it still feels more of a stretch on the MX style switches than it does with these flat ones uh, being so close together. So the chock switches have a different pinout arrangement than MX style switches. So it's not something you can just put on an ordinary circuit board. The board itself has to be designed to accommodate the chock switches. And of course, when you're doing that, you want to get them positioned so that you can get this kind of layout. So it really does need to be a board that is built specifically for chock switches. And that's what this is. So the first thing I discovered after using the Kale Silent Pink switches on the corn, which really are quiet, so when you switch to the Gergoplex, there's definitely a noticeable noise difference. They're quite clacky. But it's not that an unpleasant clack. It's kind of quite muted, but it's definitely there. Uh, but in conjunction with that ultra light feel, it makes for quite an interesting experience. Uh, but apparently there are ways to make this quieter with lubing the springs and O-rings and things like that. So I'm definitely going to explore that because it would be really cool to get this quieter, I think. So in terms of ergonomics, I've always thought the thumb keys are the kind of things that that would make a keyboard work for you or not i think it, you know everyone's kind of positioning according to the, the way the hand is rotated it has a big impact on where your thumb falls on these inner and outer thumb row keys now when you buy this it's actually the 1.5 u keycap that's in the middle and the little one is on the inside and for me that seemed the wrong way around because uh, when you've got your thumb on its home key you kind of want to know that you're at that fixed point of reference. So having a longer key at that point, it, it makes it more ambiguous as to where your thumb is. So then you haven't got that repeatable muscle memory to go to the inner and outer keys. So I switched the, the one U key to the home thumb key and then used the longer one on the inner key. And that works really well because not only does it bring this uh, outer thumb key a little bit closer to the home position, it means you have got some sort of room for overshooting as well. So you haven't got to be as accurate and the thumb isn't that good at being very accurate, I find, uh, when it's stretching away from its home position, either inwards or outwards. Uh, so it's nice to be able to just go over and you know you're going to get the key either just by moving a little bit or if you overshoot, that's fine too. And of course on here, we've got the 2U key, which is really long. So if your thumb is sort of positioned up here, according to how you, you sit with your rotation, uh, I think there's a bit of variance. I still prefer to have my hand slightly across the board like that rather than dead in line. Just means I find the pinky keys are a little bit easier to access. And that means my thumb is slightly lower than perhaps others might be, but this long key makes that work fine. You can still easily hit that at the bottom. So of course we do have a flat profile. Uh, each, each row key is the same shape, so there's no curve uh, from the keycaps like you get when you go for a sculpted profile like I've got on the corn. So in this case, obviously that brings the lower row slightly nearer your fingers, which is a great thing on this keyboard because obviously the, the MX switches are that bit more spaced out. But with this one, without the, the sculpting, you've got the keys closer together anyway. So it kind of offsets the difference a little bit there, but certainly I don't feel there's any issue stretching to reach the keys on this due to their not being sculpted profile. So when you buy this from G Heavy Industries, you can either buy it as a kit and you can solder it all together yourself, or you can buy it in this ready form, uh, which is where it comes fully assembled and, and literally ready to plug, plug in and go. So we can look at the build quality a little bit. Obviously, 
without a case or anything else like that, there's not really a lot to talk about in terms of build quality. So obviously we can look at the soldering on the back of the board and it's definitely very neat. It looks very high quality. Interestingly, there is a lot of flux all over the board and apparently you can get that, get rid of that with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So that's uh, something that will be nice to do to get all that cleaned up. But it's really interesting looking at the back of these PCBs because there's some stunning artwork on both sides of this. So it doesn't come with any cables unless you specifically ask for them. So I had to find a mini USB cable. Interestingly, the, the mini USB port on here rather than the micro uh, or USB-C. So uh, it's a very, very old school port. But actually it's interesting because th there's very little friction on that port, which means it's quite easy just to, to clip in and out um, without worrying that you're going to wear that uh, soldering out on the port. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a pretty unusual cable these days. And I had to buy one off Amazon actually because I couldn't find one uh, kicking around. So that's just something to bear in mind. The other interesting thing about it being a mini USB port instead of micro um, is it means you can't update it to a magnetic cable. I, I can't see any magnetic cables on the market that go into a mini USB port. They're all micro. So having the pins visible on the bottom of the board here kind of makes you a little bit concerned you're going to scratch anything you put it on. But there are actually little rubber feet on the bottom uh, which protrude further than the pins and that means you can actually lay it flat i'm actually happy laying it flat on top of the ipad glass uh, when i slip it into its case and, and you can see the gap under there there's no way they're going to touch the glass uh, as long as those feet are on there so that works really nicely you've got this little sort of built-in protection to the the pins hitting stuff but of course the upside of having the pins on there is it sticks to things like your trousers or the bean bag that i use really well it kind of grips onto things uh, that are fabric so that that makes it quite easy to get into a good position on the bean bag or use it on your lap as well so the split format works actually quite well on your lap you can put them each side of your legs and the bean bag and ipad on on top of your lap and that's quite a nice way of using an ipad on the sofa and the same kind of deal in the car you can put the, the split halves on top of your legs in the car it works quite nicely so the design of this keyboard is something else considering there's obviously no case or anything that you might de derive a sense of design and aesthetics from there's been a lot of attention paid to the way this looks you know clearly you've got some funky artwork on the back of the pcb the shape of the pcb itself is designed to match the the key layout perfectly looks really cool and you've even got some nice kind of typography artwork under the keys as well it's really nice that you can see these kind of programming connectors down the side here they catch the light actually it's a subtle thing but it looks really really cool so it's nice that this kind of sense of aesthetic that's a result of not having the case is embraced and and works really well overall as kind of part of the feeling you get when you look at this thing and I think having the white keys on the blackboard provides some amazing striking contrast there and the whole thing just looks really cool. Uh, I'm very excited that something like this is part of my daily workflow. So, you know, as part of the kind of pursuit of, of simplicity and minimalism here, there's no uh, RGB lighting either under the keys or on the back, um, you know, and, and I can live with that. That's kind of goes with the sort of vibe of this sort of ultra light, ultra minimal approach to, to the keyboard, I think. Uh, yeah, it's great having the RGB lighting on the corn and the ZSA keyboards. They do look great on the desk. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're not looking at the keyboard while you're using it. So uh, it's something I can live without as pretty as it looks on the other on the other boards. So there is a 3D printed case available. Uh, you just upload the plans to a 3D printing service and get it sent to you that way uh, if you wanted to do that. So that would obviously um, seal it off on the back and, and provides a little sort of outer case. But, you know, it makes it bigger and heavier again. So I'm, uh, for, for now, I'm quite happy just living with it in its kind of purest form here. So in terms of portability, there is obviously a kind of faffiness associated with it being a split keyboard. You've got the cable in between and the two halves are a bit flappy, whereas something like the plank, there's a sort of rigidity to it and simplicity to that. You can slip it into a bag, but obviously the plank is bigger and thicker. So you're kind of weighing these two things up when you're thinking about portability. And the way that I actually move this around with my iPad, I just sit it on top of the iPad glass and slip the whole thing into its sleeve. And that works, that works well. It's still obviously slightly fiddly having the floating separate halves with the cable, but overall it's so much lighter and thinner than it would be if I'd used the plank in the same way. Uh, there's less bulge in the case as a result of this keyboard being in there than something like the plank, just because it's so thin overall. So shipping was a bit of an issue. Um, I ordered this three months ago and it's only just arrived. I know we've got lots of issues with customs and shipping and things at the moment, but um, I've had stuff shipped from Canada via FedEx and UPS and it's arrived within a couple of days. So I think if you're going to order one of these, make sure you insist on FedEx or UPS shipping. Uh, it's, it's just not worth the risk with the Canada Post that 
the um, Gboards use by default. So I think there's only one person at Gboards um, and I think they may be struggling a little bit with the demand, which is great. It's obviously it's a really exciting keyboard. So what strikes me as being a really potentially exciting thing to happen now is given that we're seeing Gboards potentially struggling under the demand uh, for these things and obviously with the shipping delays, uh, all of that kind of stuff. I think it'd be awesome if Andrew from 3dkeeb.com would make these uh, as another another option because uh, obviously they could ship it with the 3D printed key, uh, case, which would be a really nice way of buying this if you wanted to do that. And, and obviously we've seen super fast shipping from 3dkeeb.com. So I think that would be a lovely way of ordering this if, um, if that was to happen. So make sure you let them know if that's something of interest to you so they can gauge the demand on that. I have actually spoken to Andrew about this idea and he's very happy from his side um, to offer this on his website. So that's definitely something that could happen if the demand is there. So is this keyboard the end game for me in my keyboard journey? I think it might be. You know, I love typing on it. I love the layout. I love the fact that the keys are that bit closer together. Just really feels you're really not putting much effort in when you're typing it. Your fingers are barely moving uh, either down because of the low actuation distance or up and down to the different rows. Um, the thumb arrangement is really good with the larger keys on the inside and outside. Now swap those around. That works really nicely too. And, the, and I, love the, I love the aesthetic of the case free design, but also I love the utility that brings in terms of reducing its weight and bulk as well. Uh, you know, really is a great way of bringing my desktop grade productivity with me wherever I am. So I'm super excited by that i guess the only thing that i might sort of think if, as a wish list for the future is it would be lovely to see this in truly wireless form no wire between the halves and no wire between the thing uh, that you're using it with as well uh, i don't know what's involved in how possible that is but if somebody can do that i'd be definitely ex interested in exploring that so until that happens i think this is going to be my daily driver with the mac and the ipad so i hope that's been of interest if you're looking at this keyboard or any of the other mechanical keyboards there's plenty of other videos on this channel looking at the other ones i've mentioned here in more detail so take a look at those let me know if i've missed anything on this this keyboard in the comments and i'll reply there also let me know if you'd like to see anything in more detail in another video i'm very happy to to look at those and i'll see you in the next one